In the last tutorial, we looked at the mutability of objects and how it can affect the results of what we're trying to do. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a solution to that problem by talking about cloning objects. If you haven't watched the last tutorial, you may want to do that first. I've included a link in the description section. The fact that objects aren't mutable can be an advantage, but also can cause issues. Let's take a look at the example we were working with in the previous tutorial. So this example illustrates some of those issues that I'm referring to. Now what I've done here is I have an object that we've created and then I use that object to pass into this function. Now the purpose of this function is to return another function. So down here we create two new functions, increment by one and increment by two. By calling this function, passing in the object and passing in the value we want to increment by. So both of those get passed in, the increment value is set, and then it returns this function. So when we invoke this function, it actually invokes this code. Now, the problem we identified is that because these variables grasp the exact same object right here, that when we increment one, it causes it to increment the other. And so these two functions are really not separate. They're acting on the same object. Let's take a look at that really quick. So if I open up the console and I do an increment by one, we can see that it actually increments by two. It starts with 65, but then it jumps to 67. And that's because the last thing we called right here set the increment value to 2. And since they are grasping the same object, it affected what this one was doing. Now, another thing that happens is they increment the same value as well. So if we do increment by 2, it's going to start at 67 and then go to 69. And so we're really not dealing with separate objects, these two functions. So how can we get around that? Well, even though we start out with the same object, they need to have different objects. They need to have their own object to work with because we are changing a value. And so we want to make sure it only affects the one function. And we can do that by giving it its own object. Now we could create two separate objects up here, but since our starting object is the same, that seems to defeat the purpose. Why create two? So what we can do, one solution is that we can clone the objects. Now cloning is a principle used in functional programming. And as we can see in this example, you can't make a copy of an object by simply assigning it to a new variable. We do that when we call the increment total function. We pass in this object, it gets assigned to this variable. That doesn't matter. It still references the same object. And so when we mutate it, it mutates it for everything that grasps that object. So one way to clone an object is to first convert it to a string and then convert it back into an object. This way it becomes a new object. Now we can do this conversion using the JSON object in JavaScript. So let me put in a function here that will help us do that. So this clone OBJ function simply accepts an object. Then let's look at what it does. It first converts that object to a string using JSON.stringify. So the object becomes a string, and then we parse it back into an object and then return that value. So because we went from an object to a string and back to an object, this is a new object. It's a cloned object. It no longer references the object that was passed in. So let's modify our increment total function to take advantage of this clone object function. So first thing we want to do 
is clone that object. So I'm going to create a different variable and set that equal to clone obj and pass it in the object which we receive. Now this is going to be a new object. So now we want to use that throughout the function. Just going to replace all of them at once. So now new object is used to increment. New object is then logged to the console. We then increment the total of new object and then we log to the console again. Okay. So all that is happening on a cloned object. Now let's take a look. Let's save this and take a look to see if this corrects our problem. So I'm going to refresh and open the console. And now let's do by one first. Notice we went from 65 to 66. Let's do by two now. And we start at 65. We don't start at the previous number. We start at 65 and we go to 67. So there we were able to begin with the same object, but then have these functions act separately different increment values and different totals. So that's one solution in dealing with the mutable nature of objects in JavaScript. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. To continue learning, here are some additional suggestions. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed already, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. If you are ready to dive into a full course, click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.